This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Studios of WKTV. Let's go inside for Silent Voices. Hello and welcome to another edition of Silent Voices. News and stories about the child welfare system. Today, as my guest, I have First Class Sergeant Terrence Pop. On. And um, Terrence, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. It's Sergeant First Class Pop. Okay, so Sergeant First Class. I'm sorry. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself before we get into uh, why you're here. Okay, um, well, I, I've been in the military system since uh, May of 1986. Uh, roughly 13 years of active duty, 26 uh, total years of service, coming up on 27. Uh, service in uh, three wars, uh, 20 years of special operations work, uh, two Purple Hearts, and all of the uh, fruit salad that goes along with it. Uh, and it's been my pleasure, you know, being in the Army, uh, and it does have its drawbacks. Well, I want to thank you for uh, serving um, our country. Well, thank you. And, um, now, you're here today as representing the organization that, uh, did you, that you started? Correct. I, uh, a second class citizen. And before we go on with the interview, I'd like to uh, show a video that uh, you produced. Um, and this is called Purple Heart. It's Purple Heart's final beat, yes. A suicide story. So we'll take a look at that video and then we'll be back for some information. I remember the letter I got from my wife while I was in Iraq. She said she wasn't happy. Others came home to a hero's welcome. I came home to the echo of an empty house. I lived with my children for eight years. I raised them when my wife worked. I fought for joint custody. I was called a murderer and an assassin in front of a judge. Why should I miss out on raising my children just because she isn't happy? I make $45,000 a year. She makes forty. After taxes, child support, child care, health care, I have 18000 a year left to live on. I followed the rules. I went to the so-called friend of the court for some relief. They just said, it's the law. When I got laid off from work, I went there again, four times. Showed them the paperwork. And each time they told me I was in skilled trades and it should be easy for me to find a job. I guess they don't live in the real world. I had to pay the child support with my 401k. Ten years I saved for my retirement. She got half and the rest got spent 
to keep me out of jail. Then the money ran out. She's not happy, so now I live in poverty. The court has no problem slapping me in jail when I can't pay my child support, but she hasn't let me see my kids for a year, and when I go in front of a judge six times, all she gets are warnings. She's not happy, so now I can't see my children. Because she's not happy, I'm a felon. Because she is not happy, now I must go to prison. I got called up to go to war for my country. I got sent 7,000 miles away to bring freedom to those oppressed. Now my country has stripped me of my children. Now my country has forced me into poverty and servitude. Now my country has turned me into a criminal and has doomed me to prison. All because she was not happy. I don't deserve this. What was your motivation in the, in the creation of this video? I, I mean, I, after viewing it, I, uh, I kind of did a little stopping and thinking and saying, wow, is this going on? Well, my motivation, uh, I mean, I, w I was there in that, that moment. Uh, you know, I literally returned from Iraq. Uh, I was the first sergeant of 159 men. Uh, in 05, 04, 05, and by 07, uh, I'd been reduced to $138 in my checking account and living out of my car. I, I wrote that script, I, and the, the one that really uh, made it sing is, uh, he's not here today, I was going to bring him. Uh, he is uh, Blake O'Kleiner from LightcraftEntertainment.com. He oh, produced it. And that's he, your producer, right? He took it off the hook, yeah. It was, I mean, I wrote the script and he took the script and ran with it. It certainly had a, had quite a message. And after viewing the video, I started doing a little bit of research. Yeah. And I, I never realized uh, that, that all this was going on. Uh, did you receive any rewards or recognition for this video today? Uh, it did receive some acclaim. Um, of some of the local uh, film festivals. We sent it out to some of the other ones nationwide. 
uh, where it made it into the top 10 on a few of them. I don't have the list in front of me. Uh, but, you know, with that being said, I, I just want to say that particular video, you know, touches on a subject that uh, is pretty much across the board uh, shows up in the military suicides that are taking place. And that is, uh, it, I mean, the Pentagon has basically admitted that the failed relationship is a factor in roughly 80% of these uh, military suicides. And I just boil it down a little farther into the what happens as a result of that failed relationship, which is uh, introduction into the divorce industry, the front of the court, you know, falling under the VAWA laws and all that other uh, hoopla that goes with it. Well, the the Department of Defense released some stats in 2011 <laughs> on the military divorce rate. Oh yeah, I call that leave it to Beaverland. And um, this percent is 3.5 to per to 4 percent, depending on the service. Now, do you feel that's an accurate? percentage they're giving us? Okay, well, let's just put this number into perspective. Uh, in America, the average rate of divorce is roughly 48 to 52 to, uh, percent, depending upon what state or region or socioeconomic class you fall into. So, uh, you know, then you throw in war, deployments, uh, the, the long working hours on top of that, and uh, you, there's just no way you could come up with uh, three or four percent. I don't know how they're skewing those numbers to come up with that, but um, like I said, those are numbers reminiscent of Leave It to Beaverland. Huh. Well, from your experience, though, uh, what stats are you figuring we're looking at? Okay, now. From 2006 to roughly 2009, I have sat down or interviewed via Skype uh, just shy of 1,200 servicemen from across all four services, uh, with the bulk of that being in the Army and the Marines. Uh, typically, these soldiers would return to 65 to 70% divorce rate. Uh, that's just walking in the door from a combat zone. Uh, and within five years, 90% of those soldiers will be divorced. That's pretty egregious. That's, that's a pretty alarming rate. Um, what usually happens to soldiers who divorce with children if they choose to continue their military career? Okay. Um, more than likely, within three to five years, uh, that soldier's input into his children's lives will be reduced to a voice on the phone and a check in the mail. Uh, more often than not, um, inside of seven years, he's not even, not even part of the picture anymore. He's gone. And I, I also shot a video about that called uh, Phantom Holiday, which talks about uh, the, the, so, the serviceman who sets aside gifts for his children that he doesn't see. And, and, and we'll be watching that video at the end of this And that one's actually based on a, a true story. I have several friends that actually have done that. Uh, one of these uh, dealings that in this video that we just seen talked about suicide. Um, why do you feel a large portion of the military suicide are influenced by the family court and the divorce industry? Well, I mean, uh, these guys are going to war for uh, God and country and for the Constitution and to defend freedom. And then they come back from war and uh, realize that it's, uh, you know, in regards to divorce court, it's, it's a sham. Uh, you are villainated for your service. I mean, I, I'm, I'm speaking from experience here. Now, this actually happened to me. 
Okay, so I'm I'm not trying to uh, cut any corners, but uh, my time in the military, I was compared to a murderer and an assassin by the individuals who worked in the front of the court. Uh, and then my wounds, because I was blown up in Iraq in 04, and then I received a TBI. Uh, I was basically given a 45 minute time suspense to provide documentation from a psychiatrist that I was even eligible to have my children. And it's clearly evident from, the, the, from that type of behavior that their decision was already made uh, and it didn't really matter. And that was brought out on that video and we, we see that a lot in the CPS cases too where they'll bring up something that happens in the past and they use that against you and certainly you know being being in a war in military service you've gone through a lot you've seen a lot that the normal person does not see correct but it's how you handle it of course when you are a father and um i mean um, my my father was fought in the korean war uh -huh. He ran our household more like a military. Mm -hmm. He made me do things that I didn't want to do when I was a child. You lived under the household rules where you didn't have a place to stay. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, when I got older, you know, I wanted to hurry up and get out of there, but when I got older, I, I thanked him so much for running the house like that because it made me do things I didn't want to do that later on in life when I became an adult. I didn't get into this trouble and I did and I'm still doing things that hey I don't want to do. Yep. So, so you're a better man it, for it. it. It's made me into a better man. Uh -huh. But when we get into the, all this psychology business and uh, it, it's just this, this is life. This is life and many people handle a lot of this stuff very good. Yep. I mean, I, I started secondclasscitizen.org. It's, a, it's a, an actual nonprofit organization. Uh, and we make these videos for informational purposes only, uh, which is part of our charter. And uh, I mean, all I can say is I'm going to continue to make more as often as I can. Uh, I mean, I'm still in the army so I can't run it full time I have an in other individual running it for me but uh, I mean there's a lot of other uh, you know things I want to touch on and I want to get into the CPS abuses and stuff because I I talk to between 10 and 50 people a month who are going through the whole divorce process and they either have issues with the vow abuse of the vowel laws or the, the CPS being called or um, uh, false abuse and I refer to that as the nuclear option where they could automatically it's an auto win in divorce for them. So uh, Second Class Citizens was an organization that you started and um, how far have you been able to carry this? Well I actually got invited to speak uh, in the Capitol in regards to uh, military suicides uh, I spoke in front of roughly, I think it was like 2,200 people. I've given interviews. Um, I was actually contacted by the, uh, uh, was it the suicide task force that the Pentagon has? And I explained to them that I made my uh, deductions based on Google and cut and paste from Microsoft Office. Because every time I heard about a military suicide, there'd be a write-up. I would copy it onto a document and I would do a search or a find and replace or find and search for several keywords that are pretty common in a divorce. So separation, divorce, custody, uh, visitation, um, and you know, parenting time and, and, and you know, about 80% of the time I got a hit. Well, there's, there's more, I mean this, this, this whole subject requires actual further review. Now when you, a soldier usually is divorced is that go, 
process going on while you're overseas, while you're fighting in the wars, or uh, or do you come home and find out you're divorced? Well, right now they have the Soldier Sailor uh, Relief Act, uh, which touches upon that. Technically, um, without your permission, they are not to move forward with the divorce if you are deployed. But the way the law is written, there is no teeth. So if a local state or principality within that state was to violate that, there is no backlash, there is no repercussions for them. So it doesn't really matter. Well, that That's sounds, just my opinion though. I, <laughs> That sounds very familiar with, uh, you know, what's happening in the CPS child welfare system. An agency, they can um, disregard the law, disregard the rules, and uh, nothing becomes of it. Just a little, uh, write us a memo within 30 days how you're going to correct this action. So, so yeah, there's, uh, there's no uh, laws without any teeth in it. That's correct. There's no repercussions. There's no accountability. And, and without those two things going on, you know, it's it's pretty much pointless. And then what we have uh, this video touched upon the financial strife, strife that uh, many of these soldiers face during divorce. Uh, I think it might be similar to many of the other custody disputes. Yes. But um, uh, somebody was saying uh, he lost his complete 401 or half of his 401k and yeah. uh, paying back support. And well, for, uh, well, for my um, research, it takes an individual a minimum of three attempts to get the, the child support adjusted if you should lose your job. And you are to make the difference up between your unemployment and the loss of your job with funds from your 401k. And roughly it's three to six months to get in front of a magistrate. So you're talking a year and a half. Uh, if your 401k is forty or fifty thousand dollars, that's gone. And then you're talking, you know, criminal penalties. And even today they can even hit you with a felony for not paying your child support, e even if you're rightfully unemployed. I can't find another job. Now in your situation, um, when was the last time you seen your child? Well, uh, I am a neat case. Uh, once my divorce was final, I got the standard option, which is every other weekend, and I threw a complete fit, and I had my uh, ex-wife in court pretty much every 37 days. <laughs> And uh, to the point I wore the court out and they allowed me to have three weekends a month. And uh, all, I, you know, all I really want now is an additional 10 days in the summer and I should, I'll be satiated. So after fight, fight, fight yeah. in court, oh, yeah. you finally have gotten to a point it, where you get some... Yeah, and it, it, it actually pays to learn the system, learn how to fill out the paperwork yourself, don't involve an attorney, do your own deal because uh, it becomes a war of attrition and I'm good at war. <laughs> we heard that before, so. Yeah. Um, I like to go and take a look at this uh, video. It's a short video that you made, Phantom Holiday, and I, that fits so much in with uh, parents that have had their rights terminated also, grandparents mm -hmm. that can't see their grandchildren. So let's take a look at that video. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alexa. Happy birthday to you. I love you, baby. I hope to see you soon.
the bike you'll never ride, the bed you'll never sleep in, the room you'll never see, the father you'll never know, the father I was never allowed to be. Well, Terrence, we've got uh, a little bit more than a minute left. Is there anything that you'd like to talk, tell the audience before we... Um... Yeah, I would like to go into the fact that, uh, you know, this system is taking children away from loving parents. Okay, the system is destroying an intangible. And any system that can destroy an intangible is inherently evil and needs to be revamped, destroyed, or replaced, or done away with, in my opinion. Okay, I don't like how this whole thing is working out. Um, the, the best interest of the child, in my opinion, is a wild excuse for people to do whatever they wish. And I think it's wrong. Well, Terrence, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Um, you can Learn more about Second Class Citizens at secondclasscitizens.org. At secondclasscitizens.org. Well, thank you. No, thank you. Um, we want to thank you all for watching this week's edition of Silent Voices. If you have questions, comments, you can email us at miparentalrights.com. That's gmail.com. That's miparentalrights gmail.com. We also have a social network I'd like you to uh, join. That's uh, miparentalrights.ning.com. That's miparentalrights.ning.com. Until next week, remember, your voice can make the difference.